Let's just go ahead and assume that every album I talked about in my own personal 10 out of 10 video is on this list. I think that's a safe assumption to make. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the most anticipated video of the year. <laughs> I'm gonna try to kind of speed run this because we got a lot of albums to talk about and a lot of these albums I've already talked about. I try to do only one album per artist. There's exceptions to that rule. It's kind of hard to do that. These are like my personal favorite albums that are just really important to me and my life. We're first gonna talk about Mad Villainy by Mad Villain. It's in the thumbnail, so not clickbait. This guy fucks with doom. All caps when you spell the man's name. Before I listened to this album, my concept of rap was really only kind of like the mainstream like rap artists and like kind of shit that like my friends would listen to like kind of like party rap is kind of like what I would describe it but this album and also the money store shout out to the money store it kind of opened my eyes to what the genre of rap can be the instrumentals on this thing are like completely unlike any other rap album that I've heard at the time and like also just MF Doom just completely shines with his bars on this thing so yeah this album really kind of opened my eyes to the rap genre this album also gets bonus points for having a uh, Fortet remixes Speaking of Fortet, he's my favorite producer of all time, so I have to talk about... Goodness gracious. He's my favorite producer of all time, so I gotta talk about uh, Everything Ecstatic by Fortet. This is definitely not the uh, easiest Fortet album to get into, but this is the first Fortet album that I listen to. Every single time I come back to this thing, I'm just completely impressed with uh, kind of just the development of these tracks. I think um, this is definitely Fortet at his best. Just the way all of these tracks just kind of build within each other is just really insane to hear. Next album I want to talk about is More Than Any Other Day by Ott. This is like the first post-punk album that I listened to. I listened to it before I even knew what post-punk really was and I was obsessed with this thing dude this is like a year before I just I started listening to like people like Black Midi and stuff like that so like this album was like completely mind-boggling to me I don't think Ott gets a lot of appreciation but uh, I, I really think they should because they're a really great band they only have three albums this is their best in my opinion I'm gonna talk about homogenic by Bjork because I forgot to talk about it in my 10 out of 10 video because this album is a 10 out of 10 in my eyes this album is just super fucking interesting in my opinion the instrumentals combined with Bjork passionate vocals insanely cool to hear a lot of really cool glitchy IDM type beats happening in this thing I've already talked about this album a lot on this channel I just thought I would mention it and say that is this is a 10 out of 10 album Uchu Nippon Setagaya by Fishman's this is the best Fishman's album of all time well actually the studio Fishman's album of all time this is their their final studio album and this is the one that really re resonates the most with me they really just kind of take everything that they've been doing throughout their entire career and kind of just put it into this one album and it's really great to listen to it's kind of just peak like dream pop neo psychedelic music damn i was not lying when i said i was gonna be speed running this bro the power is that b by death grips oh my god there's ants on my computer <laughs> technically this is two albums this is a compilation record of two albums so technically i'm cheating here but both those albums are great so like this being a double album kind of just makes it even better. The first disc is definitely my favorite because uh, those Bjork samples are just insane, dude. Just the way that the instrumentals are like built in this in the first disc are just like so insane. Unlike any other rap album I've heard in my entire life. And the second disc is good too, obviously. That's why it's on this list. Uh, I guess I'll talk about it. Uh, How to Leave Town by Carsey Headrest. <laughs> I've mentioned it many times before. This is my favorite Car Seattle Rest album, one of my favorite albums of all time. It's just fantastic, honestly. I listened to this thing for the first time so long ago, bro, and like it just like really hit me. And like kind of like the lo-fi industry, this is the first album that I listened to that was kind of more like it felt like something bigger, even though it was like still just like a dude in his bedroom recording music. So it was really just really inspiring album overall. I mean Will Toledo inspired me to start making music, so obviously I gotta I gotta shout him out here. Music has the right to children by Boards of Canada. Similar to more than any other day I listened to this album before I even really knew what IDM was and then I just kind of went down a rabbit hole after that honestly dude the beats on this thing are so sick dude I think it's really cool how like this album is kind of repetitive but it doesn't feel repetitive because like you're just so entranced by what's going on with like the way that they're like chopping up those drums and stuff like that like the drums are it's so crazy dude this is so crazy this record really kind of opened my eyes to what electronic music could be insignificance by jim o'rook if you follow me on instagram which you should 
I'm active on there. You would know that I've been obsessed with this album for the past week. I listened to this thing for the first time like a year ago, but like more recently I kind of got back into it and like literally dude, I've been listening to this thing non-stop. Like there's so many other albums that I need to listen to like for videos and shit, but I always just end up going back to this album. This album is just so pretty, man. Jim's songwriting is just fantastic. The way like these songs are structured lyrically and instrumentally are great. Apparently there's a lot of odd time signatures in this thing, so if you're into odd time signatures, you're gonna like this record. Dude, some of these lyrics are like so great, bro. Looking at you reminds me of staring at the sun and how the blind are so damn lucky. Bro, that line is crazy. <laughs> that line is crazy. Also, shout out to uh, Mise Ray and the Discord for showing this to me. Join the Discord, by the way. A lot of cool things happen in the Discord. We got listening parties, got album clubs, a lot of musicians in there, so you can uh, share your music and stuff and get feedback if you're a musician yourself. Great community to be a part of. I'm even popping in every now and then. Homework by Daft Punk. I've already made an entire video on this channel about why I think homework is better than Discovery. Not a lot of people watch that one, so if you guys are disgusted by this take, go check out that video. The Emergency and I by The Dismemberment Plan. I don't even know what I have to say about this. I mean, this is just a fantastic album. It's like really insane that this album came out in the 1990s because it did not, it doesn't feel like it came out in 1990s. The energy throughout this entire album is incredible. I've already mentioned this, but I think like this album has like its own unique identity within the music that was kind of coming out within that time, like in, the, in 99 and stuff like that. What else do I have on here? I got the, uh, I literally wrote it as the Holy Trinity of Sufjan. This counts as one album. Okay, guys, this counts as one album. Literally some of the best albums, like, of all time, and it's all made by one man. <laughs> one legend of a man. Yeah, I mean, all three of these albums are insane. It's kind of crazy how Sufjan has jumped from different styles within his career and has nailed it every single time. Like, I couldn't pick a favorite out of these three. Like, the, it's literally the holy trinity of Sufjan. Marquee Moon by Television. This is, like, the prettiest post-punk album that I've ever heard in my life. The guitar tones throughout this thing are incredible. Compared to other post-punk albums that I've listened to from this era, it's not like crazy energetic, but it still is like, it still gets you pumped up. I used to listen to this thing a lot when going on runs and it was, it was great. This is a great album to run to. I will tell you that much right now. This whole thing is just front to back, fantastic. Great melodies in this album, love it. Africa Brazil by George Benjor. I don't know if a lot of people have heard this, but if you haven't heard it, I highly recommend it. It's like Brazilian pop music from the 70s. A lot of funky grooves on this thing. A lot of uh, songs that just make you want to get up and dance. The melodies are so infectious. George is a fantastic guitar player. It's just, a, it's like a really fun vibe that I don't hear a lot of music. Probably because I haven't listened to a lot of Brazilian pop music. But as someone who does not listen to a lot of Brazilian pop music, this album is one of the best albums of all time. <laughs> Big Fish Theory by Vince Staples. This might be a shock. This might actually be a, a whoa. Kyle listens to Vince Staples. Based, bro. <laughs> this album is insane. Like the production on this thing is really top notch and like the hooks on this thing are fantastic. But really the, the production takes the takes the cake. I listened to this thing with like a really good pair of headphones like a couple weeks ago and that's what solidified this album spot on this list. It's really like electronic in a very unique way. If you haven't listened to Big Fish Theory, highly recommend it. I'm recommending you guys a lot of albums. Someone make a video where do you, where you listen to all my top albums and then make a review on each of them. Oh, this is gonna be another surprise. Showbiz by Muse. Showbiz definitely isn't like the best Muse album per se, but it's my favorite just because I really enjoy like the raw energy of this album. Something about these guys being in like their early 20s, late teens, making an album that sounds like this just really hits me deep. It's like before they got all pretentious, I guess. Not to say that Origin of Symmetry is a pretentious album. Origin of Symmetry is like a really grand album compared to Showbiz. And Showbiz has a lot of like fun tracks that like you don't really hear on Origin of Symmetry, you know, like songs like Cave and and Uno and Sober. Bro, you would never hear a song like Sober anywhere in Muse's discography other than Showbiz. Sober is one of their best songs. Muse's first four albums are really fucking amazing. Muse is cringe now, but back in the day, they had some bangers, bro. Back in the day, Muse had some bangers. They're fucking ants everywhere. Speaking of albums by bands that aren't objectively their best album, but are my favorite album, 1039 Smoothed Out Slappy Hours by Green Day. Crazy, crazy pick, I will admit. I don't know, same thing with um, 
showbiz where like something about like the raw energy of this album just really makes me want to stick with it like if i want to listen to green day especially these days i'm going to listen to this album just because like it's j literally just the dudes that are just they're just rocking out having a good time like the lyrics aren't good but that doesn't matter because they're just fu you're just fucking rocking out to this thing and it's just the energy is just so raw i love it it's just so raw dragon new warm mountain i believe in you by uh big thief it was my favorite album of last year, so obviously it's going to be on this list. Not going to talk about it, because I've already talked about it. Fantastic album. Heaven or Las Vegas by um, Cocto Twins. So I haven't listened to a lot of Shoegaze albums. I've listened to a few. And also, this, I guess, isn't technically, like, the most Shoegaze album, but it does count as a Shoegaze album, right? I've never been able to find a Shoegaze album that makes me feel the way this album feels. Better than Loveless, better than Slovaki. Every time I listen to this thing, I would just feel like I'm in this, like, amazing dream with, like, cotton candy clouds and shit. I've been obsessed with this album for a long time, and I've actually never talked about it on this channel, now that I think about it. But yeah, no, this album is fantastic. Highly recommend it. Well, I'm sure you guys have heard it, honestly. Oh, I forgot to talk about this album. The Way Out by the books. Dude, I almost completely went past that on my list. This album really kind of opened my eyes to like how samples could be used. Or I guess the books in general. Not this album because I listened to um, the Green album. I forgot what it's called. It was the first time I listened to something and noticed like someone else's recording and music and I'm just like you can do that? But this album is definitely the best books album just because like similar to Fishman's it's their last album and I feel like they just kind of take everything that they've learned in the like the 10 years that they've been working together and they just kind of made a masterpiece of an album like the sampling in this thing is such a freaking masterclass dude this album is just incredible I love this thing so much I've been wanting to talk about the books on this channel ever since I made this channel so I'm so hyped that I finally get the opportunity to talk about the books this is the best books album but all their albums are great honestly Mookie Mookie Man Man Sue. I don't think a lot of people know about this album. I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of cool. I'm kind of a kind of the cool guy here, coolest guy at the park. This is kind of like a folk, like freak folk type album. It's kind of weird to explain. It's just like avant-garde folk from like South Korea. I think is where these people originate from. This is their only album, which is really disappointing, or at least their only album that I know of. But yeah, this thing is uh, really beautiful for how avant-garde it can get. This album is really beautiful to listen to. Really unique percussion choices throughout this thing. The two singers, uh, their vocals blend really well in this thing. The kind of dichotomy in some of the tracks here are really interesting because like there's just a lot of tracks that are just kind of like fun and goofy almost and then there's like tracks that are just like really just kind of really beautiful this park is getting crowded guys came here i guess right before soccer practice or something <laughs> songs in the key of life by stevie wonder i literally talked about this album last week so i'm not gonna talk about it again but just know it's one of my favorite albums of all time solidified in this video in this list the only other album that i have to talk about today is uh gung jung duduk by uh, Midair Thief. Which, by the way, I just saw Fantano's video about how Midair Thief is overrated. That dude has no idea what he's talking about. I'm gonna tell you right now, that dude just threw away his career in one video. <laughs> this is uh, Midair Thief's debut. This album is kind of like Crumbling's like more immature, funnier, kind of cooler, you know, goofier brother who's uh, definitely not medicated, pro probably should be medicated. <laughs> it sounds a lot more like kind of organic than uh, Crumbling, where like Crumbling has all these like electronic instruments and stuff like that. And while this album, I guess, could still be classified as Folktronica, the, the instruments that he uses kind of sound more uh less electronic than crumbling it just feels more organic that's the only word i could use to describe it if you're a fan of crumbling and you haven't listened to this album yet definitely go listen to it don't listen to it expecting something like crumbling because you're not going to get that it is really good though and yeah honestly fuck fantano for for saying that about crumbling i was going to say fuck fantano earlier but there's a lot of kids walking around and it's like i don't want to get kicked out of this park you know these guys are they're coming here for soccer practice and there's just this random dude filming a youtube video <laughs> like get a job man oh i forgot well i was gonna talk about Air in the airplane over the sea that's also one of my favorite albums of all time i mean i've talked about that album enough on this channel though you might have noticed that hey that's not 50 albums if you take a look at the title you dingus this is part one part two is gonna be coming out in a couple weeks thank you guys for watching if someone wants to make a video reviewing my top albums of all time go ahead i don't know if anyone wants to do that but i mean it'd be, be kind of cool <laughs>